you don't do that. I mean, I, I mean, I guess the the main struggle uh, as I have as a person, and, and my wife is the same way, is that we are introverts. And, well, yeah, that's the biggest uh, thing too. We are need our downtime at home after a long day's day's worth of work, or in my wife's case, a couple a day or two off after working, you know, multiple nights straight. Okay. So yeah, I, I guess mean... finding an outside activity where I could cart the. Hello and welcome to Leash Dad's podcast tonight. We are two Leash Dads, as we are every night, who get together to discuss our everyday lives while chained to our parental responsibilities. Like this that's one. That's Justin and Eleonora. And that's Jared. As nope, didn't mention it before, but that's Jared, folks. He is here. He is still clogged up and. You know, we'll see how the night goes. <laughs> yeah, let, let's let's see how it goes. <laughs> uh, I I hate sinus issues. Uh, I had a deviated septum uh, when I was in my teens through my early twenties, uh, and it, it 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 got fixed. But I think there's something wrong again. I don't know. It's just it's it got I, it was a temporary fix for a you know. A long, <laughs> a short uh, solution, or I guess a temporary fix, or fix for almost like I wouldn't say a permanent problem, but you know, a long-lasting problem. Yeah. So who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had that before. Um, I just know that recently I've had. Oh, if I have kept track about three or four bloody noses in the past week um curse you dry wow. air curse you wisconsin yeah. uh switching over from fall to winter and or uh, it hasn't really switched over to fall to winter but as the dry air is making its way in it's causing my nose to bleed and um it's unfortunate because arlo has taken after me as well so arlo also has fallen uh, to a couple bloody noses already this uh, November, sadly enough. So hopefully we'll be done with it soon. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, that's what I got. Um, I guess. So uh, as we talk more, um, yeah, my my week has been one of those things. Again, bloody noses here and there. Uh, it's actually fun having a bloody nose at work. Not really. Uh, Especially when especially you're when you're in people's mouths. I mean, that's, well, okay, that's I don't like... have them while I'm working on a patient or anything like that. But speaking of work, I have taken or starting to get uh, into mouths again. Again, still doing more of the uh, untying as they get seated or whatnot. Um, my boss Monday was kind of chaotic since our boss had re- or our doctor had returned to work. So, yeah, it was a little more chaotic. We, I shifted gears a little bit, focusing on just bringing patients back um, on Tuesday and today a little bit here. I uh, felt a little more successful bringing them back and just sitting them down and whatnot. Uh, tomorrow or Thursday, uh, I should say, Thursday, October or November 16th, uh, I will be focusing on or have focused. Sorry, I will have focused on getting patients uh, just seated. So my boss is like, your, your goal for tomorrow is to focus on getting patients seated (laughs) when that, when they check in and the little smiley face poster goes up, you're up there. Like, well, she didn't say speedy Gonzalez, but you go up there, bring them back, go up there, bring them back, except for a few things. Um, because there are sing, there are a few things you don't actually sit down. Uh, or seat, uh, which are like consults. So people that are just being either referred or uh, trying to maybe considering doing ortho work because again, they were basically referred from their family dentist or whatnot. Um, Models. So patients that have already gone through the consultation and coming in to get their work done, or maybe actually it was the other way around. They come in, get the models taken, then they consult, see how that would work, would work. Um, And then diagnosis. Uh, so I think models and diagnosis all kind of come together. Uh, maybe it's, you know, diagnosis first, model second, 
consult third. I don't know. I'm not in that process yet. I uh, don't think I'll, I, well, I won't say ever, I won't ever be there. Eventually I'll probably, I will probably be there, but not, not now, maybe in a couple of years. Um, but yeah, so that's been a process. Uh, we're working, I'm working on that just to make sure we can get patients back there uh, in their seats, because that is the theory of just get, it's not like we don't want to ever consider them numbers because they're not numbers, right? They are people and her patients are people. Uh, so we want them to feel like that. But we also, the company feels strongly that the it's better to have them in their actual seat to be looked at versus uh, just sitting in the waiting room. So my goal is to make sure that we get them seated and looked at or checked on whatnot. So once I do that, I can start untying them if they're ready um but that's my that's gonna be my week here uh and then i do work out sadly it's november so i work friday for the first time in like forever um at least in the dent or the ortho setting uh but it'll it'll be a slower day because it's only a five hour day versus like a 10 or nine or 10 hour day um and so on and so forth so but yeah uh that's kind of a week for me coming up here or would have have happened. Um, what about you, good sir? Hopefully, work hasn't been too bad. No, it's been absolutely crazy. Uh, again, it's it's taking up most of my time. Uh, yeah. Trying to adjust with the uh, new schedule of Natalie working nights and weekends. Uh, it's it's a bit much, uh, but it's nothing I can't handle for sure. It's just something that I have to get used to. I mean. We've had our weekends off ever since we were together or dating, you know, so that's 10 years and it's, um, it's finally coming, you know, to an end and, you know, different ways of working and, uh, it, I gotta, I gotta step up more and, and, uh, you know, cook dinner after work and do a bunch of cleaning by myself. So, uh, it's, it's just different. But hey, welcome. in my ass. Welcome to the life that I felt for a little bit here, and I kind of still feel. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, it's kind of what I'm going, kind of what I'm going through right now. Uh, I am home alone. Uh, I've got children to put to bed and whatnot, so it's uh, always difficult. I know. I think Sam doesn't always like it, uh, just because she likes to be. I know she likes to be home with the kids as well. Uh, but you know, work is work, and it's you know when you have. When you're a nurse or something or have to do certain shifts, it's never pleasurable. Uh, you know, you've all, you've got your advantages, but you've got your disadvantages. Nighttime, it's probably a little slower. But at the same time, you're missing out if you're a parent. If you're probably just a single person or a bachelor or a bachelorette, yes. Yes. That is not daddy or mommy. Mommy and daddy are not single. <laughs> if we were single and ready to, you know, had nothing else to do, like no kids to take care of or any other like responsibilities, working a night shift wouldn't be bad. You know, it'd be, it'd be okay, but that's not the case at all. Um, it is nice though. I will tell you this much. The, one of the advantages, the fact that at least somebody is going to be home during the day and somebody's going to be home during the night. Allie, you need to stop. Little Miss Nora needs to stop. Oh, you want to hear, huh? Okay, hold on. Do you hear anything? What do you hear? Nothing. Okay. Good girl. All right. She's just not going to stop. Oh. No. All right. Anyways. Something to so, do. <laughs> it's something I to... guess. But this is not what I want. This is not what we need right now. So, <laughs> Nora, do not mess that up, please. I don't need that type of night. <laughs> don't need that type of night again. But yeah, so uh, having somebody at home versus not home at all is very, diff- uh, you know, sometimes a necessity. But um, maybe that's what we can focus on. <laughs> I know. Cause... Darn it. This is why I don't want these headsets anymore. Uh, <laughs> one of these days I'll probably get rid of her when doing these. Um, you know, talking about being home versus not being home or having to do things like this, 
Yes, you are. <laughs> Hold on. Go ahead. Take care, everyone, for a second. Uh, I'm not sure where he was going with that sentence, uh, but you know, it's it's. Uh, I've never had to, to do the you know, the taking you know cooking dinner after work and stuff. You know, on occasion on a Friday night, I would. I would grill or, you know, make some dinner just to uh, alleviate, you know, release my wife's duty on that. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's kicking my ass, like I said. Uh, it, it's very different. Um, but uh, I'm enjoying the extra time I get with my kids, for sure. Uh, definitely some daddy-daughter days. And I'm, I, I even cooked, I even got a, a list of meals that I can easily prepare that I know that they'll eat. So I can do that quickly after dinner. Uh, also, I, I really should get a list of activities as well that uh, instead of scratching my brain and saying, well, Jesus, I don't really know what to do. I can just refer to the list of activities that I can do with my kids. That'll keep them occupied. Uh, okay. So TV or, or playing games. Creating. <sighs> So creating a list of activities is never a bad thing, right? Um, have you and Natalie ever considered uh, like any social activities or like getting them out of the house for a little bit? Now, granted, I know with your schedule, it can be difficult uh, and it does take some adjustments, honestly, right? So we've got two, you know, right now I've got two kids that are doing different activities. Um one of them does like three nights a week. The other one is only one night a week. Wednesdays for us right now are very, very busy. Like, what? It's to me, it'd be very difficult to go from point A to point B. Uh, if I needed to do it, I would make it work. Uh, where I would, in fact, probably just drop one off and pick the other, pick them up afterwards, and they would know that ahead of time be like okay well i'm gonna drop you off here and then i'm going to pick you up after after i'm done with the other child um just because he's a little older he understands that he's not being left about left alone or anything like that and he could probably just chill out in his place that he's at whereas the younger one not so much uh just one of those unfortunate things at the time you know only being six years old and whatnot versus 11 um just wait until the third child gets in, involved in like some sort of activity um or so, you know I'll, I'll, I'll call it activity like you know a while back yes we did talk about supporting your children in sports or activities um this is one of those things that becomes very difficult when their schedules all kind of fall on the same thing um thankfully Eventually here, our eldest will drop down to two nights a week uh, and freeing up our Wednesdays a little bit. His schedule is going to look more like Mondays and Thursdays. Um, later in the night, though, from like 6.45 to 8 o'clock. So an hour and 15 minutes, but later in the evening, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. So, uh, and then... Wednesdays will just be one hour out of the house, basically. Um, yeah, so activities. What Have you ever talked to them about what they might be interested in yet? Like social outside the house activities? Yeah. No, I don't want to leave the house. I mean, it, I, that's It's not bad, about you, though. I know it's not, but she's also in kindergarten. What is she going to do? Besides, like, gymnastics, which we couldn't afford right now. Okay. What about basketball? I mean, what about, like, what about, you guys have, do you have a gym membership, like, through the Y, I thought? Or is it somebody else? We no, that's somebody it. else. I'm, you dropped it. Okay. Well, because I was thinking, if you still had the gym membership, I, I know, I don't know what it's like down in the Sheboygan area. Um, but up here, the Y does some, sometimes we do, the Y has, like, a program going on. Where the cost isn't like too bad, but the kids can play in a sport for, you know, the season or whatever, right? Or whatever the season is considered. 
uh, so a couple a couple months or something like that, they could play a sport like soccer or basketball or something, whatever is going on, or whatever this why has got going on, and you don't even have to be a member for it. Um, I don't know if the Sheboygan area or the why in that area does anything like that. Last time I checked, you had to be a member to do that stuff. Interesting. Yeah, I don't remember having to be a member for it. So, my like, it just might be based on certain areas, though, too. Um, because, I mean, the Fox Cities, you've got, like, Nina Menasha Y. You've got uh, a couple of spots in Appleton. And you've got Heart of the Valley out in Kimberly. You know, just a few different Ys in the area that can do that which is i guess nice um so i i don't know if they have multiple Ys over in your area or not or within the surrounding cities so it again that might be why to population base uh, who knows i could just be speaking out of my butt for all i know right now um <laughs> wouldn't be the first time folks but yes uh I would maybe take a look at that if you get even if you get something in the mail too, uh, because I think that would be a great way. Uh, it doesn't. It's not like they make you go hard or you, anything like that. Um, I know Kane did indoor soccer essentially, uh, or fo- uh, I think it's called like foosball now or something like that. Not the tabletop foosball where you kick the ball around or whatever. No, actually they called it football. So they're, you know, the not, I won't call it the knockoff, but the year <sighs> drives me nuts. I'm pretty sure they call it football um, instead of indoor soccer now, but it's, I don't know what the difference is. I will never understand the difference because it's stupid. They try to make it something it's, uh, that's already existing, but uh, differently. But yeah, so uh, take a look at some of those activities or... Um, I don't know. Is there any type of, uh, I know with her being in kindergarten, does she have like a little choir concert coming up at all? I don't know if Uh, kindergarten does that. I can't remember. Or through school. So does her school do any type of like events? I know our school, uh, last week did like a fall festival or fall dance. Parents had to be there in attendance we couldn't leave them at the door but then again it's an elementary school so what do you get any types of events like that or updates about those types of events yeah we 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 already missed the fall harvest dance thing because we were busy but yeah there's Mm. stuff like that we go to if if we're not busy yeah. yeah, see, those are always some good things to consider. Get the children out. Get yourself out of the house, even though you may not always want to. <laughs> so I, I'm curious, what is what is your, your your driver for this? Why why is this something that you are encouraging me to do? Um, I think it's healthy. It truly is healthy. It's a great way to get your not only yourself out there but get your kids involved in somewhat of a community thing let them know i mean this is more or less because some kids or some families may be heavily um i won't say antisocial, but kind of like hermits or never having anything to do and they're like i wish there was something to do well these activities are always out there it's just you got to look in the right spots. Um, so I'm not, I'm just trying to figure out ways to maybe spice up the life a little bit rather than feeling like you're stuck inside all the time with your girls or whatnot. Um, yeah, sure. I, it's just some ideas out there, right? Rather than necessarily having to write down activities and be like, okay, well, what are we going to do tonight? Play a board game. Okay. That, that lasts for what? 20 minutes. Well, then it lasts about a couple hours because they like to do it multiple times. But well, okay. But think about think about the idea of their attention span. Could it really last that like hour or two hours? It has. 
It has. Oh, like what games have you played? Uh, Jumanji. They like Trouble. Okay. Uh, the wiggle. There's a giggle wiggle caterpillar game. There's a shark game that you take stuff out with hooks out of their mouth and it claps. Yeah. Out. Okay. Yep. I know those. I don't know. I I remember the giggle wiggle. I it's been a while since I played that one. My kids have always wanted to play. Like they've asked me, but they don't do this normally. And I say normally because they're too involved in video games or electronics. Oh. So I've taken away electronics from them and they have to find something else, which this is good for them, right? They've wanted to play Guess Who. So other people have wanted to play Guess Who, but they love playing with dad. So I have no problem doing that. I'm just trying to find ways for um, maybe those people that are like, okay, how do I get my children away from electronics? Right? Right. You take the electronics. I mean, you're not. I'm not saying ground them and say, "Hey, no electronics," and force them to find something else to do. But these other activities, uh, offering to play board games. I know you already do that. You probably have family night still, right, or some sort of night set up to do that, which is great. But there's other activities as well. So let's say you don't necessarily want to do a board night three nights in a row or whatever it may be. Find you can find this activity. You know, find find some activities like that, like going to that f- harvest festival that you could have gone to um, or like whatever comes up next. I don't know. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't do that. I mean, I, I, mean, I guess the the main struggle uh, as I have as a person and, and my wife is the same way is that we are introverts and well, yeah that's the biggest uh, thing too we are need our downtime at home after a long days days worth of work or in my wife's case a couple a day or two off after working you know multiple nights straight okay so yeah, i guess I mean... Finding an outside activity where I could cart the kids and hang out with some other adults and they could hang out with some other kids would be somewhat helpful and healthy for them and myself. But if I take keep, them to a dance, I mean, take them to a wedding, take them to a wedding, you'll have the adults yeah, there. I can just crash any wedding out there yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I only get invited to like a, one wedding a year, but yeah. I've been um, invited to two weddings for next year already, uh, both in a sense. One's actually a friend of uh, Sam's, like a age school friend or something like that. And the other one is like my cousin's. Still, I've yet to see if my cousin's is coming true or not, but he's only got about five months or so. Um, his is set up for, I think it's April or something like that, April or May. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. What activity, uh, Allie? So, I mean, as healthy as I guess it would be like? to get out of my comfort shell, I, 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 I really, you know, I'm talking to people all day, every day, and even right. though it's in my basement in my office, it, it's still an interact, a social interaction that I need to uh, withdraw myself from uh, because it just it gets too much for me as a person to sit there and be. Like, you know, conversing for eight hours a day and then, uh, you know, the eight hours to, you know, five days a week. So, you know, and if, and if I keep going and 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 not having that time to regenerate my, my social, my, my, you know, myself, I will crash and burn, and trust me, it has <laughs> happened before, uh, and it's not pretty. <laughs> I get it. I get it. And we're back so, to a close-up cam. Somebody couldn't keep their hands off my cords. Yeah, hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, aside from being an introvert, you don't have to necessarily chat with everybody that's there. I'm not saying that I go up to parents and be like, Hey, how's your day going? Right. Um, or anything like that. I don't, we don't do that. Sam doesn't do that. We will go get, it's more or less just to let the kids get out of the house, burn off some energy, uh, or get themselves riled up and everything only to have them calm down. Um, 
by no means are we saying go, go as an adult you need to go out and it's now become a responsibility to talk to everybody there and you need to let go of the cord let go of my cords no but i mean everybody's different right you don't I get it. Sometimes you just don't, you're an introvert to the point that you don't want to go out at all. Um, unless you really have to for like shopping purposes or something of that nature. Um, it's just something to do, something to change up the life when you have time or again, just trying to find out uh, how to keep children engaged or uh, show them other things that are what? Yes, you're tired. You are overtired. I know you're overtired. Oh, problem one. Again, being the only parent home. Huh. That's a problem. But, point being, uh, as far as doing extra activities, finding ways to break up your day, break up the children's day, rather than just being rinse and repeat, stuck in the house, uh, <laughs> Who knows what they feel like or how they feel uh, or how you feel after a while. But uh, I think social events are always a great thing. It also helps the children. It helps the children bond with their friends or whoever they can do that with. So that's what I'm thinking about as well is how do I get my children to become more involved with their friends versus... Um, just chatting through, uh, online settings, uh, through a headphone or phone in general, right? Uh, our, our world nowadays consists of just people being on their cell phones and get out of the freaking house, get off your phones and actually chat with the person face to face. Like we used to do when we were kids, right? Yes, for all you people that did that as kids, yes. I did not. You stayed inside. Curse you, introverted child. Nor did I have a phone. I just was by myself. Well, well see, I mean, I, <laughs> I had neighborhood kids that I played with when I was at my dad's. Yes, and those friendships I will cherish for the rest of my life. Mm. But... I, I wonder if that's the same thing you're talking about because it's yeah, not organized. Okay. Or if you had like school friends too that you wanted to hang out with, right? You would talk to them at school. You know, you would have, you may have like this phone book, like school phone book. I remember those. The those are school good directory. Times. Yeah, the, the school directory. directory. Basic, or, yeah. You'd have their home phones essentially, or if mom, dad had a cell phone, you, it may be listed there in order to get a hold of them but you had to use that directory to call them you didn't have like a personal phone that had their number already in there and set to a speed dial where right. nowadays you go hey want to hang out through a text and they say sure then you're like okay well let's see blah 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 but you also had to rely on your parents and yet you still have to rely on your parents or whoever takes care of you but this I was do, more yeah. of a thing you actually got your parents involved in the conversation saying, hey, mom, I want to know if so-and-so can hang out or if I can go over to so-and-so's house. Sure. What time do you need to be there? Or what time are you guys planning to hang out and whatnot? Or is it okay with so-and-so's parents first? So both part, or, you know, the, not only the kids, but the parents had to get involved in the conversation as well. Um, I mean, that's not, a, it's, it's socializing uh, a little differently than, social events or anything of that nature but i think this is more geared towards again the children and being able to do something of that nature we technology has made it very easy for them to reach out to their friends nowadays because parents are now this isn't all parents but parents are buying their kids phones uh which i think is still a bad idea i don't like the idea that my 11 year old has a phone because he's just going to be consumed by technology, sadly. Uh, he already is consumed by it. His phone is his... He uses his phone for his, for reading. He uses his phone to play games. 
uses his phone to text, which isn't a bad thing if he needs us. Um, but at one point, he had already, I guess, if I recall, no, that, that might have been through a different platform, but it was a mess. <laughs> it was just... I think it's just a mess when children have technology they don't necessarily need, especially in elementary school. You know, I, as an adult, I'm taking my child to an elementary school dance, like, again, the fall festival that we had. We are required to be there as a parent. We were required to be there. We couldn't just drop our child off and go. My son doesn't need a cell phone for that. I am right there. Right. If they are ready to go, they come to us. Um, high school is a little different story. I can understand it. You need the cell phone, or if you're in because you're in some sort of sport, you need to find a way to get mommy or daddy's attention or get a hold of them and be like, "Yep, come pick me up. I'm done." So, as they get older, it's I think situation. You know, the situation changes, but or they start doing more social events independently versus depend. You know. Also requiring a parent to be there. So being more dependent on your parents. But social events are always a good thing. I would I would try to get children involved or be like, oh, yep, this sounds like a good idea. We're going to go do it. All right. Um, but I also would say be careful because having a lot of children and then having to take one child do it and then have to also carry the other children around can be a hassle. Yeah. And that's where I'm at right now. Wednesdays, like I said, are my very busy schedule. Uh, I've got one kid that goes to one sport, another kid that goes to another. I unfortunately, we're fortunate enough to have somebody else take one child somewhere else. Or Sam will do her, you know, take care of one child, I'll take care of the other. But then I'm still, I'm mainly, the, usually, sorry. I am usually the one that has to bring the other two young ones with me. It's just usually how it happens. Did she fall asleep? No, she's on the floor. And we're just going to watch the baby for a little bit here, folks. See what she's doing. What she's trying she's to look for. She's being curious. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Nothing wrong with her being curious. Yeah, That's so kind of like her favorite movie. for folks on, on the pod here, uh, not watching video, uh, she's on the floor and she's standing on by the video uh, bookshelf and she's she's exploring all the DVDs she can get into and now she's putting them on the floor where they belong. Oh, she's going to she's gonna check one out. What is it? It looks like uh, Shrek or Puss in Boots. Oh, classics. Yes. Shrek 2. Don't care. Nope, I don't have enough. Sorry, folks. I don't have enough cord to continue doing that. Um, but yeah, so social events. Uh, if you have anything that comes up, I recommend taking a look into it. You don't have to necessarily do it all the time either. Even if you are an introvert, you just take a look at it. It might be good for you to make sure you're getting your kids out of the house. Um, another plenty of activities you can do inside your house. I don't know with the location you parents may be at as well. Um, allowing your kids to play outside with other kids. If you have neighborhood kids, it's always a great thing. Get them out of your hair for a little bit because truthfully, you don't need to gray any faster than you already are. As much as I love all you folks. Um, I sometimes feel, uh, like I'm growing faster than I should be. More or less in my situation, balding faster than I should be. Say hi, Allie. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. Here's my good girl. She's looking up at the camera now. She's looking around. With a big smile on her face. Yep. She's got a big smile. She knows she's getting some attention. She's truly a daddy's girl. Sam made a, com or a comment the, uh, the other day. It's like, you couldn't just give me one. And by that meaning, couldn't I couldn't give her a child that wants mommy more than daddy. <laughs> Who's home more? That's exactly the point. <laughs> I was like, I 
not going to say anything. Because she okay. truly sacrifices a lot more. Yep. Being at away. So, um, now it's funny, though, because we talk about the first six months with this one being our last child, right? Sam took six months off of the year. But look, <laughs> look where it's at now. Yeah. Still a daddy's girl. Because I'm still the one around her more often. You know, even if Sam is home, I come home from work or whatever now. And... Bam, daddy comes crawling to daddy. It's it's adorable, but it's kind of saddening to the point that no, it is sad. I mean, for sure, I definitely empathize with Sam on that one. That's it's yeah. gotta be hard. Yeah, I don't know if it truly bugs her that much. I think it's just well, I guess there's a little bit of jealousy, um, but I don't think it's like I'm gonna be in tears now because I don't have a child that's a mommy's child. She's got her eldest. She's got her 11-year-old son that's a mommy's boy. But I think she wants one, you know, that's really... I can't say really hers because, again, her 11-year-old is hers. (laughs) But I think she was looking for another one that always is like, mommy first before daddy, thanks, guys. Now, there are times where it will happen where they do go to mommy first before daddy. Or they go away from daddy because they're not getting what they want. Or they tend to be afraid, in a sense, because daddy scolded them for something. You know, vice versa, right? So, looking at my eyes, all of a sudden. Introvert activities uh, that I would like to write down and pursue. Uh, The other night, they had wanted to play with Play Doh in my wife's craft room slash office, which isn't an office anymore. Yep. But, uh, you know, her her craft room. And uh, I felt bad because it was at the time where I needed to start cooking dinner, and they're not allowed in there by themselves for very obvious reasons. They create a mess, and especially in that room, they don't clean it up. And like they pick out crayons and write on stuff, uh, you know, in their bedroom in the craft room. It's a nightmare. So they're not allowed in there by themselves. So I said, you know, I said, of course, later. Well, later never really came, and I was kind of depressed for them because I had promised later, and it never ha- came true because. Honestly, personally, I don't want to be in that room for the small fact that uh, it's selfish of me, but I would have nothing to do. And I don't want to be on my phone kind of situation, and I don't want to have the TV on. So in the instance where I would like something in the background to do uh, while they're doing their thing, you know, you know I, could, I could draw, but the table situation is not set up for me for that i could read a book don't have any books up there i could listen to music nothing up there except my phone which who wants to listen to music on their phone so i do what i had wanted to do uh probably even even tomorrow night if not friday night or something is set up something down here where i can have all this Right in, net, right by me, so we can appre- do some music appreciation, some drawings, some Play-Doh, whatnot, and have some daddy-daughter time, uh, you know, introvert style. Because I had gotten the thought pattern in my head, you know, I really want my my girls, like you know, and, and Antonio, to to appreciate music and have it move them as much as it does me. Now I can't control their their brain on how they listen to music and how much it affects them, but I was thinking about it and I was always listening to music around my dad, which is how I got into a majority of this, is because of him. Like if it was just him and I, uh, especially I have fond memories and I, Christ, I was so young. I had to have been like four or five when he was doing laundry. He used to put headphones just like these on my head. And would play music while he did his laundry, ironing, polishing shoes, whatever. And I will never forget what was playing. It was Frankie Goes to Hollywood for all you 80s fans out there. And, uh, you know, obviously I'll never forget the activity. 
I would like something with that for my kids. You know, that they, they them to in their thirties or twenties or even teenagers, yeah. Me and me and daddy used to listen to, to music, you know, drawing and listen and reading books and doing Play Doh in the basement. I know that song, I like that kind of thing. Or I'm sure they wouldn't right. call me daddy at that point in their life, but you get what I'm trying to say. Damn it. Come on. I'm sick. I get it. So Yeah, I don't know. I with the idea of them doing Play Doh. I think you could have done that during dinner or like while you were making dinner, but brought it downstairs. Yeah, in as a perfect world, that would to. have worked. But there's no room because there's Christmas decorations laid out everywhere. Even at and, like the dinner uh, table? They're on there too. Oh, see, that's that's a hard thing. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, we're in the process still. Uh, some, we ran into a few snakes. But we're we're getting there. I think so we're eighty five percent last time we talked. A, a plethora. Well, it only moved about two percent since then. Uh, it, you know, there's a plethora of excess stuff and whatever on the on the dining room table uh... that involves Christmas. So uh, we only have like eating spots for us. The rest of the table is consumed. Oh, funny. You use a dining table to eat, but it's being consumed by decorations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That's a bad joke. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> speak. Yeah. So, if you have anything to do about activities and introverts or whatnot, I, you know, even, heck, um, if the kids ever want to do something, I think just get involved with it. Try to get involved as best as you can. Um, I mean, the music thing, uh, uh, you know, look. maybe use the music as a background noise like you said uh you don't have to be on your phone constantly or whatnot or if you have a radio that's even better or like a stereo or cd player uh jared you look like you're dying are you dying right now uh i don't know i just coughed really hard now i'm busy okay well let's let's talk about this we'll just wrap this up here uh i just say again if you are having fun or trying to find something to do Take a look at what the community has going on around you, like your school or like your, if your children are in school um, or some of those free events that I know that a lot of places have going on. Uh, you know, the library example, has free events that are good. Libraries you know. do have free events. They have like the reading circles or whatnot. Yep. Um, I know back in October, I was we were doing a lot of, uh, we did some trunk or treats as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, churches have a lot of events that we go... Uh, you know, it's scary enough. We are not necessarily, like, a practicing family when it comes to religion. But we have gone to... There's a church by our house, and we've gone to their events. Because it's not necessarily you just... Yes, I'm, we're a mooch. But, I mean, the events are, you know, towards those holidays, such as Easter. Or there was one other one that we had gone to. Oh, we like to do... They have, like, a... A horse ride like a you get pulled by a couple horses around our block um which is kind of nice they'll do it's an annual thing they do uh but you know we'll do it uh it, i know it's for them to try to recruit more uh members to their uh, church or their you know their practice uh but at the same time you know we go because we can uh they also have like a chili cook off there uh, so again, it's just another way to get them out, like get the kids out of the house, see what's going on around the neighborhood, um, and have some fun while we're able to do it as well. You know, we're not necessarily building conversation with uh, everybody that's there, but it just provides different things for the kids to do, for us to do um, when we have that downtime. So, uh, share us with your share share us what you guys like to do in your spare time. Um, you got multiple ways to do it, uh, you know, via f- voicemail here and uh, Spotify or, um, you know, sending us a message in Facebook, sending us a message via TikTok or my TikTok uh, at Darth Nomi. If you haven't seen that already, Twitter, you can always DM me on Twitter. Uh, you can send us an email. Uh, you got multiple ways to do it as well. So. If you guys have any questions or anything or want to share some stories as well, 
or activities or events that you like to do, let us know. We would be more than happy to share them as well within this. Um, without further ado, I know, Jared, you said you're still feeling like crap. So let's, uh, we'll try to wrap it up here. Um, in the interest here, I was just reminiscing about the beautiful herb garden I had when I was growing up. Good times. Good times. Was that a joke or? That was supposed to be a joke. Sorry. Oh. My cord got unplugged. Your herb garden. Good times. Yes. Herb garden. Yep. Herbs. Do I, do I enjoy making courthouse puns? <clears throat> Guilty. Nope. All right. My wife asked me to sink her phone. So I threw it into the ocean. There, hey, anything would have worked there. Yeah, so I stuck it in the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Put it in the bathtub. All right, all right. Last one. If athletes get athlete's foot, what do astronauts get? Missile Astronaut. toe? Uh, <laughs> missiles. Rocket toe. <laughs> Rocket toe, I like that one. All right. Rocket toe. Uh, let's see here. My wife is really mad that I have no sense of direction. I packed up my stuff and right. A little dark? No, not dark. I have no sense of direction, so I packed up my stuff and right. Oh, okay. It's not clicking, is it? No. No. Oh, bummer. I'll have to explain that one to him later. But anyways, folks, again, you know where to find us. Uh, you all have a good night. We'll see you next time. Normally you pack up your stuff and leave. You're like, still recording.